So photo editing is your thing and you're looking for a brand new device to, you know, enhance your workflow, but you cannot decide between the iPad Pro and the new MacBook Pro 13 inch. In this video, I'm here to test both when it comes to, you know, Photoshop work, photo editing, importing photos, all the general stuff in order to help you decide which device is best for you. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like in this video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions as the algorithm likes that, and will help push my videos to more people. So without wasting any more time, let's jump into this photo editing comparison. So first up, I want to talk about importing photos to these devices, and it's a pretty much identical process hardware wise. You need to have a dongle that goes from USB type C to SD card or whatever media you're reading, and you got to plug it in to the one or two USB ports on your uh, machine. So with the MacBook here, you plug it in, you open up Finder, and then you find your device. So it'll pop up in the sidebar here. So I named this G74. Um, then I can go to my DCIM folder and then I'm going to look at some files that I already predetermined I've picked. Um, so let's go to July 8th here. And the ones that I highlighted yellow, I want to import. So I'm going to select these photos. I'm holding down command, click, click. So I'm actually going to make a new folder on my desktop just titled photos to be edited. You can store your files or whatever wherever you want, but I'm just doing it on my desktop out of convenience. So I'm dragging those here like so. We're gonna go to another folder here. And just to talk about Finder for a second, you get info here, you get the size of the image, what type of image it is, you get to see them in thumbnail view, you get to see them in this view, whatever they call it, you know, folder, kind of like showing you the path of, you know, wherever you're going, finding your file. You can also have this view, which does give you info as well. Um, but I prefer to just use the list view. It just gives me information in a small little clip. We're going to import the ones that I selected yellow. So we're gonna drag them over like so, and boom. That's as simple as it really gets. You know, dragging and dropping or copying and pasting to a folder of your choice wherever you wanna store it on your computer. Finder is very intuitive, very easy to navigate. So yeah, importing photos with your iPad Pro is very, very similar. Take your dongle, plug in your SD card, plug it into the single USB type C port on the side of your device. And then you're gonna wanna go to the files app and then your device will show up in the locations tab here or whatever. So you can tap on the device here and then you have access to these folders just like you would with Finder on a Mac. So let's tap on the DCIM folder, which is where my photos are. And unfortunately, you don't just get like a glance at like data and info as to, you know, when these, you know, folders were created or whatever. So you have to actually manually get the info. So then I'll click the info tab here. That's the right date. So then I'll click on this. And then you can see little previews of your photos. I mean, the beta is kind of weird. So you might have some things that don't pop up right away. But I think I know a photo I want anyway here. It's going to be 34, I believe. Here we go. Or 36. How about this one? So we'll view it. That looks good. So then I'm going to actually hold down on it and I'm going to click move. So then I'm going to, I've already created a folder here, but you can create a new folder if you want to add files into. So like, say you had a particular event that you took pictures of, you can create like a folder of like, you know, a wedding, you know, and you can add like a date or something. So then, you know, then you have that folder to put all your photos in, but I'm not going to do that. I have actually have a photos um, uh, folder here so I can just import that or just copy it over there. And it's as simple as that, that I can go to, you know, on my iPad, find that folder. And then I have these two photos that I already added here to this folder. It's very, very simple. So are there any cons to importing photos with your MacBook? Um, absolutely not. Finder is my favorite file management system on any operating system. It's very easy to navigate. And once again, you can organize your files very intuitively. So are there any cons to importing photos with an iPad Pro? The only thing I can really think of is that it's a watered down version of Finder. And Finder is absolutely amazing. I love it and I will always prefer it. However, it is a very similar experience here. I'm actually very impressed. Although you don't get all like the information right in front of your face like you do with a Mac where you have like, you can just like see a date at a glance or like particular information about like image size and details or whatever. You actually have to, you know, look for the info, the file for more information, you know, without it just being there on your screen. However, though, I mean, you still can make new folders. The uh, import process is very simple. Finding your external storage is also very simple. So comparing the two, I wouldn't say there's too much difference. And it's really awesome that we have this great file management system with iPadOS here with the iPad Pro. Next up, I wanna talk about the photo editing software that is available for both these devices. With your Mac, you obviously have the full suite of Adobe apps. I have Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Photoshop installed here. I actually like to use the newer Lightroom CC. 
and I always use the uh, full desktop Photoshop to make my thumbnails with. So I'll open that up here. And obviously, if you you know do some photo editing of any kind, photo manipulation, whatever, you're very familiar with this uh, program. I'm not really gonna demo it, but if you want to drag a photo in, you can go to your folder and select the photo that you want. So I can like uh, press the space bar and just view a photo that I want to edit. So I'll actually find one that's in landscape. So I'll choose this one, let's just say, drag it in to uh, the composition here, if I can even do that. And here we are and we can get to editing away and resizing and all that good stuff. So in regard to the photo editing applications you have with iPad Pro, you have Lightroom CC, which you also have on the Mac. It's the same exact experience, literally. You also have Photoshop Express and Photoshop Mix, which kind of offer aspects of the full version of Photoshop, which by the way, is coming to the iPad Pro someday, who even knows, but when it does, I will definitely be using it on the iPad Pro because of the pencil. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But with Photoshop Mix, you know, you have the ability to, you know, add uh, titles and make some fine adjustments but it's not like the full version of Photoshop. You know, it's kind of like Lightroom and like any other photo editing app. It's still Adobe, but it's kind of basic. It's like for people who don't really know how to, you know, use the particular tools in Photoshop, like the, you know, lasso tool and like the polygonal lasso and like the clone tool, like none of this is here, but you can, you know, make some fine adjustments and crop and add titles and filters and whatever. We also have Photoshop Mix, which allows you to, you know, cut out parts of images with like lasso tools. So I can go to cut out, I can use the smart lasso which will kind of like automatically see what can be isolated from an image and it does a kind of sort of decent job so I'm cutting myself out with the stupid expression here and there you go it'll kind of soften the edges as well but you can also use a manual lasso tool which is actually pretty great with the Apple pencil I will say I'm gonna do a little quick job here not my best work at all but as you can see here if you have a good hand you can definitely get along the edges of an image and cut it out like so and yeah, there you go. Not a bad job at all. Very similar to what you can do with the full version of Photoshop on a Mac, and it's even better with the Apple Pencil. And if you absolutely cannot wait for the full version of Photoshop and the iPad Pro is your only device, you can buy apps like Affinity Photo, which will allow you to do many of the same things. That, as you can see here, there's similar tools, you know, lasso, cloning, whatever. So yeah, there are definitely good alternatives to the full version of Photoshop, but honestly, I would wait for the full you know, desktop version of Photoshop to show up on the iPad Pro. I think it'll be a really great experience, especially once again with the Apple Pencil. So are there any cons to using Photoshop or any Photoshop alternatives with a MacBook Pro? There is one that I can think of, and that is the lack of like a fine input, like a stylus. The trackpad and a mouse can only go so far, and while I enjoy using them, um, I would really like to be able to use a stylus of some sort, like you could on a Surface you know, Pro 6, or the iPad Pro when it finally has a full version of Photoshop there. Especially when it comes to, you know, cutting out particular things in images, I would like to be able to just, you know, draw along uh, surfaces and edges with my pencil or a stylus rather than having to do it with the cursor. It's a lot more difficult, but yeah, using it on an iPad Pro for that kind of work, especially for my workflow where I'm constantly isolating layers and images would really benefit with the use of an Apple Pencil. So are there any cons to editing photos like doing Photoshop-like work with the iPad Pro? Um, yes, as of right now, you know, industry standard programs aren't exactly available, and I'm talking mostly about Photoshop, but it will be, and with the Apple Pencil, I swear it's going to be the best experience, probably even better than what you can get with a MacBook Pro. But with that said, I mean, I managed to use a Mac with Photoshop every day, so no worries there if you prefer the MacBook form factor in the operating system. I've actually gotten quite skilled with the mouse with the polygonal lasso tool, once again, isolating layers and whatever. And also remember that you can connect like a Wacom tablet or touchscreen to this computer. And also there's Project Sidecar coming with Mac OS Catalina, which would allow you to use your iPad as sort of like a external touchscreen monitor. And last up, I wanna talk about using Lightroom with both of these devices. With the MacBook Pro, you have the option of using the newer Lightroom CC or whatever it's called, and the Lightroom Classic application. So I actually use the Adobe Lightroom, the newer app more, and that's what I use to touch up my thumbnails. So we can look here and I can maybe see some adjustments that I made here, yeah, adding, you know, whites and you know adding texture and sharpness and whatever but if you prefer you know Lightroom Classic then this is probably going to be the device you want to get I have not seen any huge differences between like the functionality of both these apps they just look a little bit different but obviously this is an older application and this one is like cross-platform and will sync up your photos between your iPad and your Mac if you have one which is really nice I'm actually happy that I can view what I've edited on both you know operating systems in both devices 
And yeah, editing with the trackpad on this big, beautiful, bright display is definitely a good experience. I feel like I can, you know, get into the nitty gritty and make some, you know, fine tune adjustments. Absolutely no problem. And here is Lightroom with my iPad Pro. And I think I said I actually enjoy editing photos on here more than with my MacBook because you can use the Apple Pencil. So obviously I can add a photo here so I can select this one, done, and we home, select this. And then we can, you know, adjust the exposure here with the Apple Pencil. We can also, you know, do some uh, white balance adjustment. So we can go like this, click the check mark, adjust temperature. Let's go down here, adjust the texture. I know I'm not doing a really great job here. You can also obviously uh, see the before and after by holding down on the image. It's an identical experience to what you get with the MacBook Pro. And as I said, it's just even better with the Apple Pencil. So I really do enjoy once again, editing my thumbnails, you know, touching them up. Once I get them right out of Photoshop, I'll airdrop them over to my iPad to, you know, adjust and make them pop a little bit more. So I'll show you, I can show you like the before and the after maybe kind of like how it was more boring and now it's more saturated. Same thing here, you know, darker, not as popping out with the Lightroom adjustments, bam, it looks a lot better. And lastly, I want to talk about local adjustments. While you can do that with the MacBook Pro, with the trackpad and the cursor, it's just a much better experience with the iPad Pro as you can just like color in whatever part you want to adjust. I just find it way easier and more intuitive so I can like bring up the exposure on myself here. So let's just do that. Obviously, you wouldn't do that. But yeah, it's really great that you can just kind of color in the spots that you want to adjust rather than kind of like shade it in with your trackpad. It's just a much better experience. Once again, with the Apple pencil second generation so are there any cons to editing you know with lightroom on your macbook pro well i will say having a stylus once again just like with photoshop would be a nice thing i do actually enjoy editing photos on my ipad pro more simply because of the apple pencil um that's not to say though that the trackpad is hard to use or anything you're not touching the screen so you can kind of just see your photos without having your hand in the way so that is a pro i guess it's also a pro that you know your photoshop app your full version of it is on the same device so you don't have to do any like transferring or air dropping there's just one less step and if you you know edit thumbnails like i do it's just a one step to export and then just drag it into the you know youtube window when you're about to upload a video so i guess my workflow is simplified when i'm using you know Lightroom and Photoshop in tandem on the same device however using a, a stylus would be a nice thing so are there any cons to editing photos with Lightroom with an iPad Pro? The only tiny little one I can think about is that if you prefer Lightroom Classic, obviously you cannot get it on here. Everything else about editing with Lightroom with an iPad Pro is amazing, especially once again, I'll say it again and again, with the Apple Pencil. It's just a really great experience. And honestly, if you use Lightroom and only Lightroom for most of your photo work, I would just say, get an iPad Pro 100%. You do not need to spend the extra money. I'd rather you spend money on the Pencil and the Pro, maybe even 12.9 inch Pro if you're so inclined. Um, I love the experience on here. And once again, I prefer to edit or uh, touch up my photos that I you know, export from Photoshop with my iPad Pro as opposed to my iMac and the MacBook Pro in this case. So what is my takeaway here? Well, I gotta say, Although you can't get full Photoshop on it yet, iPad Pro is my preferred device for photo editing. It's just more fun and intuitive, especially with the Apple Pencil. And while once again, you're gonna have to rely on a MacBook for full Photoshop, um, it's coming to iPad Pro and that is something we should all be excited about. And if you want the MacBook Pro for the form factor and for the operating system, particularly Finder, there's no shame in that. You know, you can spend the extra money. You're still gonna have a great experience. And you also have to remember, you can actually attach an iPad to it and use that as an external touch screen with Project Sidecar coming with Mac OS Catalina. But yeah, iPad Pro is an excellent device with not too many compromises when it comes to photo editing. And that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.